punching body mechanics and distance. Once you understand the physics behind the body mechanics, then it's far easier for you to train and to actually know the whole work behind the technique. Everybody who was in the class of physics knows that two components makes a kinetic energy. The one is speed and the other is the mass of the object. You have these two components, so you want to bring both components into your technique. And uh, we're gonna look at straight punching and at hook punching for these purposes. When it comes to straight punching, the first one, obviously you have your hand or your arm movement, which is just your arm movement. So there's not a lot of mass here. So the important thing here is, of course, the speed of the hand. But if you only punch with your arm, because there's not a lot of mass behind it, the punch is going to be a pretty weak punch. Even if you're fast, no body behind it, so no sad mass, then you are gonna have weak punch. So you have somehow to put the mass, your body behind your punch. What you can do is when you punch, you can do the step. So then you have more mass behind your punch. If you just do the step like this, you essentially use just gravity. The difference between no step and step is like if you push somebody with your arms, okay, just with your arm, or if you go here and you step, because I involve my body into this, it's, you just have more power. It's just um, physics, okay? Now, if you want to put even more body mass behind the punch, so you don't just do the step, you don't just let the gravity do the work for you, you involve your legs, so your legs, you make you sure you push with your legs. When you push with your legs, then you have even more power. Now you combine your arm, gravity, and then also acceleration from your leg. Okay, so you put all these three things into your punch. Then the third component is rotational component. So when you rotate with the side you punch, you add additional mass and also you add additional acceleration. So instead of just going like here, okay, you go also like here. Okay, so now you have linear force, you have gravitational force, and you have rotational force all in one punch. You accelerate all this body mass behind also with your footwork. Your hand is accelerating, your body is accelerating, your whole mass, and you're turning the hip on, and all these kinetic energies, they combine into a single punch. The other thing is with hooks. So the hooks has more of the rotational energy. So you have, if you're here, and you hook, and then you rotate, okay? Now you, you have the rotational energy, okay? So, but also the energy just from the hand, okay? So the arm does the work alo alone. If you involve the body, you punch with the body and with the arm. Now, but you can also step here. So if you step here, then you can also involve more body mass. So from here to there, okay? You can even go from here and involve a stepping slightly forward to the side. Or you, if you're here, and the target is here, you rotate, your arm comes, and your step comes as well. Okay, so you have here, and you punch the pad, the target, with your whole body. Not just rotation and arm, but also involving here. The arm, the rotation, and the step. And that's why in Jeet Kune Do, the footwork is so important. So because you don't stand and you punch static. <laughs> Simple example, so this is pure physics. If you stand just parallel like this, and you go like here, the body doesn't support this technique because, okay, there's no leg behind you that can it support. When you stand our other way around, so this is the point of impact, so this is all in alignment. So this leg supports the whole mechanic. Remember, you would actually push with this leg. So you are actually in stepping forward when you punch. Now this is just static example, how stable all this is, okay? So now you're here, this is a something totally different. Now when he punches and he would step in, if this was a punch, his whole body supports the technique. Here when you punch like this, so you rotate your left side and this leg was pushing, you have good support of the technique, but the straight lead is scientifically uh, actually more efficient than the left hand, okay? When Bruce did Wing Chun and he started to modify Wing Chun, that was the reason when he started to place his leg behind him, 
So he had more support. You had no support when you stand like this. When you think about having a foot walking punching, then you need, of course, totally different distance. So people say, uh, nobody would punch from this or that distance when I show something. When you are in on guard, and you know you're gonna step with your punch in order to make more energy, then you can punch from greater distance than when you would do it static. If you punch like this, you have to stand even closer. And the closer you stand to your opponent, the greater chance is that he's going, he can punch you. For most people, this is not going to be punching distance, but for us, this is a punching distance. Here, okay, out of distance, push shuffle, in distance. This is a totally different body mechanic and you can use it to your advantage because you can punch, you can attack from a greater distance than your opponent can because your opponent most likely is not going to use the same body mechanic. When his distance is here, when he punches there, okay, when he uses the left and the distance is slightly closer, okay, you have to count in the footwork so you hold the pads, okay, according to the footwork. He can do also the hooks. When you involve the body in all your punches, you have to calculate when you hold your pads all in this. So when he does the hook front, okay, so he can also push in. When he does it to the side, he can step to the side. He can also use the hook, okay, backwards also with a step. So he doesn't have to stand still and does the hooks like here, like here, like here, okay. The same, just with footwork. You go here, here, and here. And these hooks are far more powerful even if he does it slightly. He punches strong. I can guarantee you, if you get this hook here, it's probably over. Even the left. Okay, so all, he's turning all the body, he's using all the footwork. So remember, you're using acceleration of the hand, acceleration of the rotation, more body mass, and then involving the step to accelerate the whole body mass. So you have an acceleration and more body weight, more mass involved in the punch, okay? So that's how you have actually uh, power in your punches. Plus, you're moving all the time when you attack, so you're not just standing still in front of the opponent and hoping he's just a pure idiot. You're moving, you're going here, and you can move here, okay? And you can go also here and move off, okay? If you use your left, you can go here, you can go to the left, and you can go here, uh, go back, and you, while you're punching, okay, you're moving here, you're moving here. You're not just standing still in front of your opponent. So anytime you punch, you move. You move for two reasons. So you're moving target, and the second reason is to involve more power in your punches. Because people say, some people say, we think there are only finger jabs and groin kicks in Jeet Kune Do. So obviously there are also punches in Jeet Kune Do. Like Bruce said, if you have choice between reaching the eye or punching the face, go for the eye. It's still the same, okay? But if you punch, you have to know how to punch right. All these body mechanics for punching, Bruce took the ideas from boxing and from fencing, especially when it comes to footwork. Close range, mid range is more boxing, okay? Longer range, mid longer range is more fencing type of footwork. And you go in and you punch and you close the distance, okay? You go here. Oh. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.